beginning of a new week, the beginning of another week, tell him thank you in your own way. Connect with him and tell him, Father, thank you. I thank you for my life. I give you all the praise. I worship you. I adore you. I magnify your name. Give him praise. Worship him. Adore him. Thank him. Add a little prayer point to it. Tell him, Father, you have caused me to see the beginning of this week. I will see the end of this week in the name of Jesus. This week will not see my end in the mighty name of Jesus. Prophesy and say, this week, glorious things is written concerning me in the name of Jesus. I will experience the glory of God. I will experience the praises and the worship in the name of Jesus of God. I will, I will have reasons to continually praise. I will have reasons to continually worship my maker. Hallelujah. Talk to the Lord for a few seconds. Just give him all the glory. Thank you, Father. Father, we worship you. We worship you. As we praise and worship you, let our praises come before you as a sweet-smelling aroma. Glorify Christ Jesus in our praise today. Dwell, oh Lord, even in our praise today. Let your name be exalted. We worship you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. We're going to sing a hymn, and the hymn is the popular hymn, There Shall Be a Shower. There, there shall be showers of blessing. That is hymn 29. Hymn 29 on page 14 of our hymn book. This week from Tuesday, we have been activating financial growth in our lives. We have been activating the, 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 the financial growth of God in our lives. Because the Bible says God is happy when his servants prosper. It say God is delighted in the prosperity of his servants and we have been looking at activating financial growth and this morning we're going to sing a hymn as a prophecy to prophesy yes we have been eating and enjoying mercy drops but from henceforth let it be showers showers of blessings hallelujah amen thank you jesus we give you praise we worship you hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior above. Shall Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. Precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain, showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O God. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come now and honor. Falling, but for the showers we bleed, there shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now, as to God, we are come. 
shall be seasons refreshing if we let God have his way showers of blessing showers of blessings we need mercy draws round us up Showers we bleed, showers, showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need. Mercy draws rounds us are falling, but for the showers we bleed, oh showers. Showers of blessing, showers of blessings we need. Mercy draws round us are falling, but for the showers we bleed. Hallelujah. If there is anybody in our midst, that is grateful for the mercy draws, but is decreeing and declaring showers from henceforth. Shout aloud, Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. Put on your dancing shoes. We're going to praise God this morning and worship Him. Worship Him with everything within you. The Bible said, "Let everything that have breath praise the Lord." You have breath this morning. Get ready to praise God. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. The song we are going to sing in the initial is to enter his gate with thanksgiving because that's what the Bible said. If you are ever going to enter the gate of the Lord, it must be with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Are we ready? I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his heart with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. We will enter his thoughts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his thoughts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. 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 I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Has he made you glad? Hallelujah. If he has made you glad, let's see it. Let's see it in your praises. Hallelujah. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, we bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. As we offer, as we offer unto you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. 
as we offer unto you, unto the Lord the sacrifices of praise. We bring the sacrifice. I'm not feeling you guys. I'm not feeling you at all. We are praising God. Please let me feel you. Hallelujah. Oh, praise into the house of the as we offer, as we offer unto you, unto the Lord the sacrifices of thanksgiving. As we offer unto you, unto the Lord the sacrifices of praise. We bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. We bring a sacrifice of praise. Into the house of the as we offer, as we offer unto you the sacrifices of thanksgiving, as we offer unto you the sacrifices of praise, as we offer, as we offer unto you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. As we offer unto you, unto the Lord a sacrifice, is a praise. Hallelujah, put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Give him the sacrifice of your clap this morning. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. is forever Hallelujah. you are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah. you are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah. Jehovah. you are the most high Hallelujah, Jehovah. You are the most high. You 
Hallelujah, let's take it higher. Let's take it higher. Let's take it higher. Hallelujah. Faster a bit. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Who has the final say? The final say. Oh, yes. Who has the final say? Situations around for good. The overturns our lives around. There's a way where there is no way. The overturns the final say. The overturns my life around, around, around. The overturns my life around. There's a way where there is no way. The overturns the final say. Situations around, around, around. I my life around. It's a way where there is no way. The final day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We exalt and magnify you this morning. You are worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wanting that we deserve as we worship you, Lord, come and change our life. Wanting, wanting, we ask of you. Wanting that we deserve that as we worship, as we worship you, Lord, come and change our life. Wanting. My God, oh, come and change our life. Arise, 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 arise. Take your place, be enthroned on our praise. Arise, King of Kings, Holy God, as we sing. worship you hallelujah hallelujah we're going to sing awesome god mighty god awesome god we give you praise hallelujah awesome god, awesome god. mighty god
Give him all the glory. Worship him. Tell him, Father, speak to me. Because a word from God is able to change your situation and change your circumstances. A word from God is able to set your feet upon the rock. Give him all the praise. Tell him, Father, in this service this morning, speak to my situation, speak to my circumstance. I refuse to get out of your presence the same way I have come. In the name of Jesus, if there is one person to bless let me be the one if there are two people to be blessed this day let me be one of them in the name of jesus hearing your presence let it rain oh your rain let it fall on me Presence, let it rain. Oh, your rain, let it fall on me. Open the flood gate in abundance and cause your rain to fall on me.
someone this morning. Welcome someone in God's presence this morning. Please you can walk around. Those who are tuned in online, you're also welcome in today's service. Our first service, the inspirational service, where we are inspired so that we can become better people in the marketplace. And we thank God for what he has been doing in our lives and, and what God is set to do this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You're welcome. Uh, please uh, fill out the feet of Jesus in the name of Jesus and expect her this morning and God will meet you at your point of need in the name of Jesus and your expectation will not be cut short in Jesus name. So you're welcome to our first service this morning. It starts from 9 to 11. Then our second service, uh, supernatural service, will start from 12 noon to 2, to 2 uh, p.m. So uh, let's uh, prepare for the same. Let's uh, have an expectant heart. In, let God strengthen our faith to receive from Him this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank God for this week. We have been having Holy Ghost Week this week. Uh, and the theme for this week, Holy Ghost Week, has been activating financial growth in life. It started on Tuesday, activating financial growth in life. And today is the grand finale. So in this first, in this first service, we shall, have, uh, we shall continue with the same activating financial growth uh, in life. Then in the evening, in the evening from six from six p.m. to eight p.m., we shall it, shall it will be the grand finale of this conference, activating financial growth in life. 
And it's my prayer that God will activate our financial growth in the mighty name of Jesus. That we shall walk in, a, in untold wealth and riches in the mighty name of Jesus. Prosperity will be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Then next week, we'll go back to our normal program on Tuesday. We shall be here again from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. for a Holy Communion service. And we thank God for the covenant that we have entered with God in this ministry that as we partake the Holy Communion, we shall live long, we shall be healthy, and we shall be strong. We shall have long life. We shall not die suddenly. God will satisfy us with long life. And then we shall live a healthy life. No sickness, no disease in the name of Jesus. And then we shall be strong. The Holy Communion will give us strong. We shall not be weak. None of us will be weak in the name of Jesus Christ. So on Tuesday, that's the Holy Communion service. And uh, let's come and partake of the Holy Communion. Come and do your part of partaking the Holy Communion. And God will, uh, will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Then on Thursday, is a, whole, uh, a prayer riot where we come and pray uh, all manners of all manner of prayers on uh, on that on that day from the, the same time 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So please, if you're not able to come to church, those who are far away, you can join us on Facebook on our Facebook page from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. and in all our other services. And God will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So I want to invite the choir this morning to come and minister one number as we usher in our Father in the Lord to come and minister this morning. So I'll invite the choir. Choir, please, you're welcome to minister with one number in Jesus' name. So please, uh, if, if you're tuned in, you can share the link online. You can share the, the, the page so many people can be tuned in. You can invite your family members, your friends to join in the service this morning. And God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Please take a viral and and a jotting uh, pad where you can write notes because it's, it's a teaching service and God will bless us in the name of Jesus Christ. In the course of the service, if you have any question, you can post it on the, on the comment. You can post it on the comment and your questions will be addressed in the name of Jesus. So invite the choir to come and lead us uh, through the administration. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Still in the line of the ministration this week, we have been believing God that he will activate financial growth in our lives. And one thing that we learned last week in the inspirational service is that we should use our mouth in the correct way. And this morning we want to prophesy the level we are entering. Hallelujah. Join us as we sing this song. The congregation that is here, you already have the song with you. Kindly join the choir. We recruit you. We recruit you this morning. So join us as we sing the praises of God. Hallelujah. As we prophesy our next level. Amen. Child of God, I've been washed in Jesus' blood, making me a man to a people of compare. So I hear a press along, daily this shall be my song. I'm a happy, happy, happy millionaire. I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. My father is rich in northern lands and I'm misery. My Lord, feast upon His Holy One, that to own His world with all His jewels there. By His Spirit I am led, and don't give an defense. I'm a happy, happy, happy millionaire. I'm 
is rich in eyes and land that I'll be saved. I tell you, I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a happy, happy, happy. Stand someone again. Stand someone again. I am not a child of God. I am now a child of God. I've been washed in Jesus' blood, making me a heir to wealth beyond compare. So while he had press and love, daily this shall be my song. I'm a happy, happy, happy millionaire. Child of God, yes, I've been washed in Jesus' blood, making me a heir to and be uncompared. So I hear I press along, daily this shall be my song. I'm a happy, happy, happy millionaire. I'm a millionaire. My father is rich in all the land that I be saved. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a happy, happy, happy millionaire. Shout it again. I'm a, I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. My father is rich in all the land that I deserve. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a happy, happy, happy millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. My father is rich in house and land and a I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a happy, happy, happy millionaire. I'm a happy, I'm a happy, happy, happy millionaire. I'm a happy, happy, happy millionaire. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you because the choir just sang your word. There should not be any poor man in, your, in the kingdom. Thank you because we are multi billionaires to the glory of your name. It is what we say, we see. We decree, O oh God, as we say it now, we shall see it forever. None of us will remain poor, even if we may be now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Give us wealth beyond compare, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, go on World Changers platform and remind everybody that coronavirus season is over. Return to church. Pick up your phone, go on the platform, tell everybody, coronavirus season is over. Let us not overflog it. Uh, let's not enthrone the devil. Return to church. Return to church. <laughs> Return to church. Coronavirus season is over. Return to church now. Service is on. Praise God. Service is on. And God is doing us good here. He's doing us well. The coronavirus season is over. Return to church. Physically, physically. Of course, some of them are joining us online. Uh -uh. Physically. And by the grace of God, no member of this church will have coronavirus. In Jesus' name. Not one member will die of coronavirus. Not one. Not one member. All those who caught the virus got healed. And not one will die. And not one will die. So prophesy. Not one member will get coronavirus. So everybody return back to church physically. We want to see you in church physically. All right. It's time for us to get into God's word for this morning. 
throughout this week we'll be talking about activating financial growth in life uh, remove the volume of your phone activating financial growth we've been talking about it discussing it from different angles i will allow pastor grace to do a recap of that before we get into the teaching so pastor grace god bless you man. hallelujah i welcome you again into god's presence this morning good morning and the lord will do us good hallelujah yes like apostle our pastor have said from tuesday through till today God has been exposing us to his word on the topic activating financial growth in life. And our pastor has delved into different areas that you don't want to miss any. Kindly, if you have missed any, it is in the, in the social media, in our, 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 Facebook in our Facebook page. Kindly go there and listen to those messages and... Uh, glean one or two you know nuggets that will help you to become who god wants you to become um from tuesday the first thing we looked at and he told us that is a way to activate financial growth in our life is through divine ideas when god gives us divine idea and the very good thing about this divine idea is that it is divine that means it's from god god can give to you god can give to me there is no monopoly of god you know it had it been it is ideas that is being sold we can have a skill and say i cannot be able to purchase it because i did not i don't have the money but because it's divine we are we are we are to go to god the giver of these ideas and tell him father you have made me open my, and one of the ways he told us we can assess divine idea is inspiration and one of the ways inspiration comes from the scriptures he read to us is through the Holy Spirit. So let us have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. Not carelessly, but praying in the Spirit with, with purpose, with understanding. Praying, Lord, open my mind, open my heart, open my spiritual eyes. I want to see. I open my spiritual ears. I want to hear. Tell me what must become. Tell me what I must do inspiration is one of the way he told us we can get divine ideas he told us another way to get divine ideas is the burden when god places a burden in your heart and you look at something and say i don't like the way this thing is or that thing is you know pressing in your heart it could be a pointer to what god wants you to do and when you do that and it will unlock wealth it will unlock finances to you hallelujah and uh, not to flog it too much so that you can be able to go and uh, look at it i want you to to go see that Tuesday meeting, divine ideas. He told us so many things about it. Education, uh, exposure can uh, give you divine ideas, dreams, visions. But on the day two, he told us about inheritance, that your inheritance can activate financial growth in your life. Your inheritance. He told us that inheritance is wealth in disguise. He told us that um, inheritance is either spiritual inheritance or physical inheritance. It is loaded. It is loaded. It is loaded. Please kindly refer to the Wednesday teaching and the Lord will bless you. Inheritance is a, a way to activate your financial growth. You know, like he told us in the spiritual aspect, grace is an inheritance. You know, favor is an inheritance. So you can activate it upon your life and it will begin to yield for you. And he told us so many things also about um, the, 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 the physical inheritance. Kindly refer to that. And the third day, he told us about compounded savings. And he used the example of Joseph in Egypt that saved for seven years and fed the whole world. He told us if you can diligently and, you know, as a matter of discipline, save for seven years, then you can save the world. It is, this message is not just coming for us to hear it. The Bible told us that when Jesus was preaching in the temple, the Bible said power was available to heal and to deliver. When God's word is coming, it is it's coming on the wings of power power to make that thing to 
to, 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 to saving, you, you need grace to be able to save. And he told us many things. Apart from grace to save, he told us that you should save with a focus. You can save for a, 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 a short term. And when you achieve it, you will be motivated to save again. Be disciplined in your saving. When you are not disciplined and you, 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 fall, you, you get yourself not you know, complying to it, then you can get discouraged. And so many things that were, were told us on that day concerning savings. That, is on, that was on Thursday. Then on Friday, we were told on compounded investment. Compounded investment. God is an investor. He invests in human beings. And that's what uh, our pastor told us that day, that the greatest investment that any man can do is investing in human beings. He told us, yes, surely some people will disappoint you, but don't say, oh, because I don't want to be disappointed and fold your hand. Continue to invest in human beings and God knows how it will come back to you how it will come back to you. So many things. Let me just read one or two things that we were told about compounded investment. He told us investing is creating fortune. When you are investing, you are creating fortune. He said everyone has something to invest. Everyone has something to invest. Think about it. Look inward. Ask God. You know, like a he, uh, the story of the widow of this, uh, the, the, the son of the prophet that came to the prophet and said, please help me because my two children are going to be taken for bond uh, servants. And the man of God asked her, what do you have? She said, I have nothing. She said, save the pot of oil. The, the, the Bible told us that the prophet told her, multiply it and, you know, begin to... to to sell it. Work to sell it. Sell it. So you and can uh, begin to live on it and begin to even invest more through it. So compounded investment. And uh, yesterday was so wonderful and very. Wo uh, just before I, 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 I go to yesterday's teaching, which was on blessing, he told us there are different kinds of investment. You can invest. In your intellect, intellectual investment, spiritual investment. Um, he told us that there is growth investment and de defensive investment. Kindly refer to that message and listen to it. Yesterday was uncommon, and uh, we were looking at blessing, the blessing of God as a medium for activating financial growth. The blessing of God. The blessing of God. Um, I will say some things about that, then I will allow him to continue in today's teaching. I will just say some things that made a very strong impact in my life, and that is, how do we get blessing? How do blessings come? You know, sometimes we think blessing comes by, okay, if God loves me, then he will bless me, or it comes accidentally. He told us some things or a way, ways to activate blessing. Ways to provoke blessing. Number one thing he told us is tithes. God will give us things. It's now our prerogative to be able to bring out one tenth of that thing that God is giving to us. If you say it's not enough, then it will never be enough. But if you say, Lord, I respect you because of your godship because of your awesomeness because of your power you are the one who have instituted the the, the covenant of titan and you 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 trust god enough to bring out one tenth of that thing that have been given to you then you are you are you are you are, you are securing your future and you are commanding the blessing of god upon your life another thing he told us is waiting on god I, 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 won't, I won't dwell on it because it's, for me it's such a very, very wonderful teaching. Another thing he told us is a way to command and activate the blessing of God is coming in the name of the Lord. So when you are leaving your house, say, I go in the name of the Lord. I go in the name of the Lord. All these things were supported with scripture. That when you are coming in the name of the Lord, you are blessed. 
and blessing is a way of activating financial blessing. When you, you want to go and see somebody say, I'm going in the name of the Lord. I'm coming in the name of the Lord. I go to my place of work in the name of the Lord. I step out of my house in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That is, when you are walking in that day, you are walking in blessing. Another thing he told us is the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. So many things. When you are fearing God, what you are literally doing is that you are commanding blessing on yourself. And the blessing of the Lord makes rich and removes sorrow from it. Another thing he told us is that when you beautify the house of the Lord, when you are beautifying the house of the Lord, you are commanding blessing on yourself. And another, which is, this, this one really made impact in my life when he was telling us this. Hearkening to the voice of the Lord. Hearkening to the voice of the Lord, you know, is a way of commanding blessing on yourself. And yesterday it dawned on me because I have always read this scripture in, in Deuteronomy chapter 28. I used to think when we are hearkening to the voice of the Lord is when we are saying, speak to me, Lord, for your servants hear it. I thought that is the only time we are hearkening to the Lord. But, you know, it, it dawned on me that as we sit in church and we are hearing God's servant because he sent his word. God sent his word. He sent it and it is dispensed to us through his pastors, through his, his representatives here on earth. So when we are sitting down there, deal of blessing, rain of blessing is coming on us. So don't ever, you know, be looking at your time and be thinking, what, what, what is going on in that pulpit? Please, I have appointment to catch. What you are, as you are sitting down there, you are downloading, blessing is being downloaded because they, as you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and not just hearkening, but making sure you are doing it. Then, the Bible says you will be blessed above all people of the earth. I was so blessed about that. I was seriously blessed. You don't want to miss yesterday's teaching. Please kindly go to our Facebook page. Click on it. Watch it. Watch it not, you know, just casually. Don't watch it casually. Watch it with, with, uh, with saying, Father, speak to me. Something that will help me to activate financial growth in my life and i'm sure that the lord will bless us in jesus name you're welcome to this inspirational service and uh, today because on the first day he gave us the uh, the, the, the the topics the topics that will be that will, he will be focusing on this morning is going to be awesome it's going to be wonderful today he's going to talk to us through the word of god and through the instructions of god on activating financial growth through hard work and wise work very interesting <laughs> i don't just want to be a hard worker i want to also be a wise worker I, you know I, I i love that so be all ears for the lord have something to tell us this morning thank you sir i give it over to you to take on the message, sir. Lord, speak to us. Amen. Take over right now and do us good. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There are two kinds of work. You can walk on earth and be blessed. I prefer combining the two. You know, I call it hard work and wise work. You can work very hard and still remain poor. <laughs> because you are not working with wisdom. That's why you see somebody who is driving Mukokoteni from when he was 13 years old and he drove Mukokoteni till he's 80. And he's still living in a mud house. And the guy walks out every day. After, at some point, he would drive Mukokoteni. Sorry, those of you from America, from different parts of the world. Mukokoteni in Kenya. What is Mukokoteni? A cat. Cat. C A R T. That. A car that has two tires that you put some two bars of yam and some bags of rice and beans and you are and you use your energy to drive it when you go towards the um, area that is very steep you you, you, are, you are you are running with it and when you go to area that is on the mountain you are, uh, 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 <laughs> taking it until you get to where you're going to at the end they'll give you 20 shillings that's like two cents or something like that. Or at most they give you 50 shillings. 
which is like uh, five cents after you work very hard the mukokotini that you are driving will help you grow muscles you will see them some of them have serious muscles but there are no other things to show for that work it's because they are working hard but they are not working wise so there is hard work and there is wise work now let's get to the aspect of hard work and i'll show you the wise aspect of it so that when you combine it you explode hallelujah praise god proverbs chapter number 21 verse 5. proverbs chapter 21 verse number 5. i hope the other camera is working if it's working can i see i want to see the effect permanently till i leave this place i'm watching from here studio i'm watching from here proverbs 21 verse number 5 the bible says the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness but of everyone that is hasty only to want the thought of a hard worker leads to plenty so that there is an aspect of hard work that is very necessary can i have other versions of the bible other versions of the bible please amplified version He said, the thought of the steadily diligent, diligent tends only to plenteousness. But everyone who is impatient and hasty, hastens only to want. You know, in our generation, people are hasty to get wealthy. They want to have money quickly. The Bible says, it takes you back to be a beggar. You be want. But anybody who believes in hard work, hard work leads to plenteousness, which is riches, wealth. I have taught you by example. You have seen me leave it in, in this nation. When everybody, as soon as they come in to you know, start a ministry, they make some noise, gather everybody together. They want the president to be part of the church. The governor, make noise, make noise, make noise everywhere. After a while, they fizzle away. I started with one person. Gradually, 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 until we got to where we are now. Gradually. Even when coronavirus came to close all churches, I continued preaching online. People are, people are still watching, like they are doing now. From different parts, I continue steadfastly. It says, steadily diligent. The thought of the steadily diligent. You must be diligent in a steady way. Not that you are diligent yesterday. Today you are very lazy and laid back. The next again you are diligent your diligence must be steady <coughs> another version of the bible please this person said the purposes of the man of industry have their outcome only in wealth but one who is over over quick in acting will only come to be in need when you are always too quick to get wealthy always calculating what will he give me what will i get from him and you are always disturbing people uh, can i have this from you can, can you get me this nobody's owing you on it sir. nobody's owing you the earlier you register that the better for you including your parents not one person is owing you on earth the only the, your parents are just a vehicle by which you came to this world so let your head be very correct not one person sometimes you some people disturb me uh, pastor can you give me someone i'm wondering did you pay my flights down here are you okay I remember when we were still at YMCA, a certain couple used to come. They would come earlier than me and be waiting. As soon as I get there, they say they need house rent, transport fare, food money, clothes money. At the beginning, I gave them some money. So that's what I have. They said, all right. As soon as I give them, they will not sit for the service. They will walk out in my presence. Two weeks later, one week later, they will return again and wait for me at the gate. As I'm coming, they said they need uh, the money for the rent. It was you this i mean they will give me the list again i carry it i will carry some little change that i had in doses and give them they will thank me service is on they will walk out again in my presence so i asked them what you thought i'm an idiot a fool i came here to play i remember they came they thought and i said not i'm not giving you a shilling why because i'm not owing you number two you guys are wicked fellows you came to church and you never sat for one service you collected the offering of everybody and went home uh, please can you leave? leave the place quickly leave me they 
said, hey, I want to drive them from the kingdom of God. I said, hey, wait, wait, let us understand it here. The kingdom of God was open. You never entered. If you want to go to hellfire, it's already open. The door is waiting already for you, Jerry. If you want to enter there. There is nobody on earth that is owing you. If you see anybody wealthy, he must have worked hard and worked wise. Learn from him and work hard and work wise so you can have direct access to the same wealth the guy has. Don't ever begin to think the guy is owing you anything and you are disturbing him, including your parents. And you are calling them, Mama, why did you bring me to this world? You, it was you that wanted to come. There were many other children. You are not many children wanted to come. It was you that jumped and came out. Let your head be correct, oh Jerry. <laughs> Many children wanted to come, sir. Many. Wait, wait, wait. Didn't you hear that there are more than one million sperms that go to fertilize the egg? It was the one that formed you that, that, that jumped and became the baby. Or let you be correct. So please, please, please. There were many other children who wanted to come to this world. You are the one that ran and said you are the one who, and you won the race. Of, excuse me, manifest like a normal human being. Stop harassing everybody because there were others who, who died because of you. All those millions of sperm that died and you won, you killed all of them and you took over and you, and you are here coming to look for who to blame and, 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 and say he brought you to this world. Ah, you are the one who rushed. <laughs> ah, you would have stayed in heaven who, 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 who knew you before. There was nobody who knew you on earth before. You are the one who chose to show up here. Ah, and you showed up here and you are not disturbing us. Oh God, wait, 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 relax. Let your mind be very clear make up your mind to live a fulfilling life on earth don't ever think somebody is owing you i'm that was that the method by which i operate if you come close to me discover i operate that method i don't disturb nobody and begin to claim you are owing me a dime wait even those of you sitting there have i ever disturbed you and told you to give me money before you will never see me do that because i understand something in this life that i came to this world to fight my way through from the day they wanted you you wanted to be uh, come by pregnancy you started fighting you started fighting as a spam you fought and you won that is the day fight begins you fight till you die you fight till you leave this world you fight your way up you uh, fight to enlarge your coast you see me behave like a lion move everywhere speak with audacity i understood that this world is fight the bible says you should fight the good fight of faith so it's a fight hallelujah praise god so the bible said the thought of the diligent tends only to plenteousness but of everyone that is hasty to want can i have the message version let's see how it puts it because let's put it in a very you know sweet funny way like that message says careful planning puts you ahead in the long run hurry and scurry puts you further behind can i have like niv niv the thought of the diligent. So diligent people always plan. You see, good planning and hard work. You see, good planning and hard work leads to prosperity. But hasty shortcuts leads to poverty. I don't take shortcuts. All of you know it. I don't. I prefer taking the long route. I will pay the price so I can get the price. When you pay the P-R-I-C-E, you get the P-R-I-Z-E. And you pay the price. And the price for financial growth is hard work work hard sir hard work hard work in the cold in the heat i've been here every day praying every day since march 8th up until now every night praying sometimes i'll be cold seriously and i'll still be here to pray sometimes it'll be hot some i will still be here to pray sometimes it'll be raining i'll still be here march 8th every day showing you what diligence is all about when you are diligent, you end up in prosperity. You see, good planning and hard work leads to prosperity. But hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. You are looking for who to connect you. They will just block you somewhere and tie you down and you'll be able to make progress. But when you settle down to work hard, you will end up prosperous. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter number 22, verse 29. I'm talking about hard work and the wise work. But I'm focusing on hard work first, then I talk about the wise work. Hard work. Proverbs chapter number 22, verse 29. Correct. It says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. From this scripture, you discover that human beings have sizes. 
there are mean men and there are kings human beings have sizes human beings have classes hard work presents you before kings laziness presents you before mean men another word for mean is not small men it is wicked men mean people who are very mean have you seen a mean man before he can use knife and, and wound you he can hit you with iron he's a mean fellow laziness presents you before mean men hard work presents you before kings can i have new living translation new living translation let's see what it talks well how he says it here quickly sir it says do you see any truly competent worker they will serve kings rather than working for ordinary people and when you serve kings kings pay you kingly salary hallelujah another version quickly please niv or something niv he says do you see a man skilled in his work he will serve before kings he will not serve before obscure <laughs> men hard work presents you before kings laziness presents you before obscure men even when you see kings you can't even stand before them you'll be shaking you'll be shaking when you see them so hard work is very important proverbs chapter 13 verse number four proverbs 13 verse number four if you want to be wealthy work hard stop being lazy don't be a storyteller always looking for a shortcut to make it it is not it, you will not make it that way when you make it suddenly it will disappear suddenly but when you grow it it stays when you grow up you stay up when you jump up you come down in life whenever you jump up you come down no matter where you get to when you're jumping you always come back down but when you grow up you stay up it's better to grow up by diligence than to jump up by a shortcut money miss road you quickly cut one person or the other and they quickly and you dupe them when you see you, you you have a deal mentality let us get all the money this guy has got he just came back from america instead of selling the shoe to him for five thousand you say it is fifty thousand it will soon finish you only jump up you come down you only you are a thief you will come down sir the landed property is 5 million. You now told them it is 50 million. You took 45 million and you gave the owner 5 million. You thought you are wise. <laughs> it's a matter of time. You will soon finish it. When you jump up, you come down. When you grow up, you stay up. That's where life is. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, verse 4, says, The soul of the slugger desired and had nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat anybody who works hard shall become big that's what he's talking about there anybody who is lazy he will only desire good things and will never have it he'll be thinking of kukuchoma nyamachoma he'll be thinking of eating meat carnival he can he'll be dreaming of it and nobody will give him because he's a lazy fellow but anybody who is a hard worker will grow big will be made fat things will change in your life oh glory to god proverbs chapter number 12 verse 27 Proverbs chapter number 12, verse 27. The Bible says, The slothful man roasted not what he took in the hunting, in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. Can I have other simpler version? NLT or NIV, any one of them. Give it to me. Thank you. It says, He who is slow in his work does, does not go in search of food, but the ready worker gets much wealth slow people who think slowly some of you discover i don't like slow people like you say okay fat, be, be fast before come on do be, be, be sharp i don't like slow things when you are slow the bible says you you forever search for food slow in thinking slow in action you 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 walk like tolo tolo you know in nigeria they believe that tolo tolo used to be very slow what is tolo tolo self duck no tolo 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 is duck is D U C K? What is duck in Kenya? Eh? Eh? What about that chicken that used to have things dropping like this? That one is a little bit. What is that one? Turkey. That is turkey. What is talking in Kiswahili? 
muzinga. Pata muzinga. Uh -huh. Do you guys eat it here? Uh, because we eat it in Nigeria and it used to be very sweet. But it is, it is very proud and slow. It, it, it works like this. In Nigeria, when you are working very slowly, especially when you are pulling your shoe on the floor, sha, 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 and your shoe is pulling on the floor when you are walking. They say, look at him walking like to, to. <laughs> In fact, when you don't prosper, they say, he's always walking like to, do to, do. Always turning like a aeroplane that wants to take off when he's walking. <laughs> That's a sign that you are very lazy. That is a sign that you are a very lazy person. See, the Bible says, He who is slow in his work does not go in search of food. But the ready worker gets much wealth. Give me another version of the Bible. The ready worker. Lazy people don't even cook the game they cut. But the diligent makes use of everything they find. Be hard working. Make use of everything. Don't waste anything. Don't waste anything. Hallelujah. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 24. Proverbs chapter number 12, verse number 24. The Bible says, The hand of the diligent shall be a rule, but the slothful shall be under tributes. The hand of a hard-working fellow will be the one ruling, but the slothful, the lazy, shall be under tribute. You are the one that you are collecting tax from. Some boys will catch you on the road and say, Hey, what? And collect everything because you are a lazy man. You'll be paying tax. But those who are hardworking, they are the ones in charge. They rule. Proverbs chapter 10, verse number 4. Proverbs chapter 10, verse number 4. The Bible says in Proverbs 10, verse 6, He become a poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make it rich. The hand of the hardworking fellow brings wealth. Can I have amplified version? Be hardworking. Stop giving excuses. I don't have transport fare. I don't have this and that one. I, hey, stop that nonsense. You will remain where you are. Be hard working. He becomes poor who works with a slack and idle hand. But the hand of the diligent makes rich. New Living Translation, please. Let us see what it says. As fast as you can. Quickly, sir. It says, lazy people are soon poor. Hard workers get rich. See, it's straight to the point there. Lazy people are soon poor. Hard workers get rich. Work hard. Another version of the Bible quickly again. Maybe an IV or something says, being lazy will make you poor, but hard work will make you rich. You are seeing it there. We're talking about financial growth. Hard work will make you rich. Work hard, sir. Stop telling stories. Stop looking for excuses. There is no matter to. There is no transport. There is Corona. Hey, you will, you, Corona will kill you. <laughs> yeah, there is this and that one. That one has held you. They will tie you down when they know that they, they won't have power enough to hold you. So, do not allow excuses. Only lazy people give excuses. Only lazy people give excuses. Don't allow excuses be used to make you poor. The devil can give you enough excuses to begin to drop. And as you keep dropping them, you will never prosper. Just remain where you are. Proverbs chapter number 10. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Okay, that's what we read. Genesis chapter 3 verse 19. I want to show you that hard work can limit, can be limited to a, in, a, in, a, in a level. It gives you wealth, but there is a level of wealth you may not be able to get just through hard work. You will now switch to the second one. Genesis 3 verse 19. Genesis chapter 3 verse 19. The Bible says, In the sweat of thy face, Shall thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground? For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. In the sweat of your face, that is hard work, shall you eat. The highest, the biggest wealth hard work can give you is what to eat. Yes. The greatest hard work we give you is make sure there is food on your table for the rest of your life. But if you want to get wealthy, then you must work wise wise work hard work is not enough hard work is good i have shown that to you and i've proved it to you i myself work very hard but i don't only work hard i work wise 
wise work added to hard work brings you financial explosion you must be smart in the evening i'll be talking about time and chance activating financial prosperity through understanding of time and chance i'll talk about that in the evening you must be smart enough to know when opportunity knocks and you cash into it you must be smart enough to know what to do in order to make your wealth progressive i have thought over the weeks what to do throughout this, this last week i thought about savings i talked about investment and i broke it down to the barest minimum to make you understand what to do to use your savings to prosper financially i also showed you what how to use your investment to prosper seriously those are wise works not just hard work wise work today i will show you the spiritual side of it of working with wisdom so you can become wealthy when you don't work with wisdom you can never be rich you will always have what to eat but having abundance you, know, <laughs> you need to work wise psalm 50 verse number five psalms chapter number 50 verse number five if you want to prosper spiritually uh, uh, financially and sustainably like i taught you from tuesday till now you want it sustained you must work wise you must do wise work not just hard work psalm 50 verse 5 says gather my sins together unto me those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15, Ephesians 5 verse 15 says, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Don't walk as a fool, always looking for who to blame. Can you imagine? And I know that guy, you, and he never helped me. And I used to help him in 1930. Story, story. It's history, sir. It's history. You will remain a beggar. Can you imagine? He's now promoted. He has forgotten me. Why would he forget you? Ah, can you imagine? Is that that one did that? Hey, stop complaining. Walk wise, man. Walk in a wise way and stop complaining. Look for nobody to blame. Don't blame anybody. I made up my mind. I will never blame anybody for any failure I encounter. I will face it and I will conquer it. And God began to help me. I will never blame anybody for anything that is happening to me. I will face the stuff squarely and I will move on in life. And that mentality began to help me. In the days when I always look for who to blame, I will not move forward. I'll be waiting for the person to say sorry or to help me. Sometimes the person will not help me. He will say, okay, sorry. I offended you, Abby. Sorry. And you will still remain there. After telling you sorry, you are still at that spot. That is foolishness. So what do I need the sorry for? I don't need the sorry for anything anymore. So I decided, let me pull up myself, pull up my socks and move forward. And the Almighty God began to help me. Don't ever look for anybody to blame. If you are looking for who to blame, you will sit there forever. Poverty will, in fact, will be romancing you, will be your permanent wife and permanent husband. So, move, walk wise. The Bible says we should walk with wisdom. We should see that we walk with wisdom. Circumspectly. Hallelujah. So, there are some realms of prosperity that you can never reach until you have a covenant walk with God. I repeat, there are some realms. <laughs> I have met people on earth. I have met people who are trying. I have met people who are poor. I have also met people who are rich. I have also met people who are stupendously rich, sir. That your problem, your problem now, is a chicken change around their life that by mistakenly putting their hands in their back pocket they can solve your problem now for for, for many years mistakenly they can put their hands in their pocket and wipe away your tears for some years <laughs> from their back pockets i have met some people like that yes sir You're from there just from their back pocket that's all you don't need to pray to me such people what you need to pray is make me father make me that person that's the best prayer 
Stop praying, Father, let me meet somebody who is rich. Eh? What if you meet him and he does nothing in your life? And he's not led to do anything? Will you kill him? Try it. He has enough bodyguards to kill you. They will jail you. You will rot in jail. Nobody will do for you. Remember, you are poor. <laughs> Nobody will do for you in jail. You will rot there. I have met some people when I went to prison to go and check, see people in prison. And they told me they've been there for many years and nobody has even checked them. Nobody even knew they are there. Nobody cares. But they conclude he has, he's lost. He must be an idiot. He has gotten lost. We thank God. And they forget you there. You will rot there. Because your life never amounted to anything before. You don't know that poverty makes you to be very cheap. They calculated. What is he even useful for here? Nothing. Let him disappear. In fact, he had disappeared. They will come and give testimony. One of our brothers that used to give us stress in our family vanished. Praise God. <laughs> we were looking for him for the past three months. We've not seen him. But for the past five years, I have not returned. They don't know you are in prison. You offended a rich man. They lock you up somewhere. So understand what I'm talking about here. Make up your mind to be the rich man. Don't wait to look for the rich man to, to, to help you. Why don't you become the rich man? That is the same mentality I began to work with. I made up my mind I will become the rich man, not the one looking for the rich man. I'm the rich man. Can you announce I'm, I'm the rich man? Shy, see, see, everybody's afraid. I am the rich man. <laughs> that is why, you know, they, when the choir was singing, I'm a millionaire. I joined them because I'm a millionaire. I, 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 am I not a millionaire? Child. <laughs> I joined them. My father is rich in houses and land and armies. Uh, I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a happy, happy, happy millionaire. Hallelujah. And you see me dancing. Second service again, I'll do the same thing. Why? Because I know who I am, sir. I made up my mind not to be the one looking for rich people. I'll be the rich man. How many have joined me today? I convince you to join me, sir. If you, if you don't want to join me, what are you doing around here? You must become a rich man. Am I talking to the right people here? Say, I'm the rich man. I'm the rich man, oh, Jerry. Say it. Now, don't be afraid. Say it well. Even if there's no money in your pocket, it doesn't matter. Say it now. I'm the rich man in the name of Jesus Christ. So, it, there are some level of wealth you can never reach until you walk by a covenant. That is why you see, there, and there are two kinds of covenant, positive covenant on the side of God and negative covenant. That's why you see some people, they go to Kovun and shrine to gather wealth. While we come to God's presence, I will show you how to activate God's own because I know that one. That's one I practice. I will show you that one. That's why you see some people, they, they marry their wife and they go and sacrifice their wife to get money. Some people sacrifice their children and keep the children, lock up the child in one room and when they shout the name, the, the money will be flowing everywhere. That's why some people sacrifice their mother. Oh, you don't watch all this Afro cinema? I thought you used to watch it. They carry their mother and sacrifice their mother and become very rich. Uh, they sacrifice their father. They do all kinds of wicked things. There are some levels, I repeat it seriously, there are some levels of wealth you can never enter until you enter a covenant. Hmm. And I will show you how to enter supernatural covenant with God to get wealth. But remember, you must be hard working first before you get to this bridge. If you're a lazy man, you, can't, you will never get to this bridge. You remain a beggar for the rest of your life. You need to be hard working before you get to this bridge. Before. And when you cross it, you say bye-bye to poverty for the rest of your life. Poverty works out of your life permanently. In fact, it will run away from you. When they mention your name, poverty will beg. I say, I, I will never brand there for the rest because <laughs> hey, there was a certain rich man in Nigeria. He was boasting. He was boasting about his wealth. He said the kind of wealth that he has, that if devourer enter inside, that devourer will eat, 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 and die, and there will still be wealth remaining. That's, that's the way the guy used to boast. You know devourer. Like when you put devourer inside his wealth, the devourer will eat, eat, and explode. Bam! And die inside him. <laughs> and there was the <laughs> He said they will pull out the dead body of devourer and there will still be wealth. He said, for him and his generation to eat. That's the kind of boast he was boasting. Anyway, God can make you like that. Make you to the extent that devourers cannot taste your wealth. God can make you like that. So how do I walk wise? Entering covenant with God. 
Now listen, one of the days, I don't know, maybe on Tuesday, I will teach the reason why people consult witchcraft. Should I teach it? I, I just got that inspiration. God showed me something about it. The reason why people become witches. They go to witch doctor, they go to witchcraft, they go to herbalist. I will teach you the reasons. So that you can make up your mind. If you want to stick with God, you stick with If you want to go to witch, so we wave you by and, and the demons will be expecting you in hellfire. <laughs> so that you are not, neither here nor there and deceiving yourself. There's no need to be a hypocrite. So, now, when you do not understand what I'm about to teach you now, one day somebody will come and tempt you and say, there is one guy that can give you some stuff to put in your pocket and you have money. You can sacrifice your uncle. This is your uncle. Sacrifice him and get money. You can sacrifice your son and you'll be, you be shaking. You'll be, you be calculated. Hey, this is your uncle. And I love this uncle, but I can kill him. And, and I need money. You'll be calculated to kill your uncle. One guy was told to sacrifice his mother. Ah, and he saw his mom. He greeted Mama. Ah, Mama, I love you. Hey, Mama was wondering, what is this kind of love that this boy is love? I lo and he carried knife. Mama, I love you, Mama. Hey, Mama. Shy, Mama. And he was trembling, trembling. Until finally, he hit the mother with the cutlass. Why? Because he needed money by force. Yes. He, they told him to bring the heart of the mother. So he hit the mother. The woman fell down. He cut open the chest and was taking the heart to go and, and get money. Listen carefully. There is a level of wealth you can never enter until you enter covenant, either with devil or with God. How do I enter with God? I want to show you now. How do I? Deuteronomy chapter number 8, verse, start, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Why is he making noise? The Trinity chapter number 8, verse 18. The Bible says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power. See, see, see. The what? When you get to this bridge, you need power. No power, you can't cross. Out of the sweat of every shall ye eat. You have some quick, quick, quick blessing. Though. When you want to enter stupendous one, you need power, sir. I'm not joking. I'm teaching you the truth. It's my mic. It's all right. It will, it will, God will give us another one very soon. <laughs> In Jesus' name. All right. Get me that scripture again. Don't worry. We'll get many mics when you read up. Many, many, many. Say, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant. See you, the word of God. I've told you, you cannot enter some level of stupendous wealth until you enter covenant. Sir. Are you seeing your Bible, somebody? He will give you power to get wealth, and then he will establish his covenant, which is swear, not just to you only, to your fathers, as it is today. Hallelujah, praise God. So, you need to walk a covenant walk with God for you to enter stupendous level of wealth. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? See, I'm talking of when you are monified. Chai. When you are monitious. <laughs> I don't know the English you use again. That's why I'm creating some. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. When, when, you, when your life <laughs> hey I'm telling you, when, when, when you are talking in millions and billions, somebody comes to you and says, Sir, I need 100,000. 100,000. And you came to me, stop insulting me. Just take one billion and run away from here. 
That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> in fact, next time when you need hundred thousand, don't come around this area. Uh, please, when you are talking, when you are need like what, some billions, uh, you can show up around this area. So just manage one billion and get out of my sight. I, I don't know. I don't be like that. One. <laughs> no, you need hundred thousand. The guy gives you two thousand. Two, two, two thousand tells you to, to to explain how you spent it. The cuckoo japa. What, what what did you use the two thousand to do? You now say eh, eh, I bought milk hundred shillings. Eh? Remaining one thousand eight. <laughs> There's no need for all that. I'm talking of you need hundred thousand. Somebody gives you one million and say please next time when you need hundred thousand don't come around here. We are talking of serious money here. That's good of you. Okay. Fine. No problem. How do I walk in covenant with God so that I can acquire power to get wealth? Is somebody understanding what I'm talking about? Power, how do I? Number one, tithing. Tithing. It empowers you to get uncommonly wealthy. It gives you some power that you never knew you could ever have. Tithing. That is why the devil is attacking it in our generation, making people not to give their tithes anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. I have told you severally how I operate. One day when Festus Umundo used to be here, he said he's studying me, he wants to know how I get money. So whenever we're going out, you'll be watching what I'm doing. <laughs> so I told him I have many secrets, but I'll give you show you one. One of it is tighten, tight. Every time anything enters your hand, 10% belongs to God. Take it out. Give it to God. Close your eyes and do it. Don't start thinking, who is eating it? You are a foolish person when you are doing that. Because at the end, you'll be deceived and your poverty will stay. If you want to operate the level of power to get wealth, diligently pay your tithe. Don't let them beg you. Don't let it be when I'm preaching now and I'm firing you and I'm fired as when you now carry your tithe and say, hey, then you now bring it to me. You now bring it. You now kneel down public so they can see you have brought your tithe. You now carry it in a bowl. So they are clapping for you. Child, that brother paid his tithe. You are a mumu. You already got your blessing. When you walk in a covenant relationship, covenant is always done in secret, but people see the result openly. You pay your tithe without making noise. Even it's one billion. Without making noise. Oh, Jerry. So that you make noise, you 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 not gather and walk around like as if I, you are, you are giving heaven on it. Take your let your head be correct, sir. You pay your tithe secretly, sir. You pay it diligently. They don't need to fire you. In fact, if you give anything less than ten ten uh, percent, it is not tight. It is is an ordinary uh, offering. Until it gets to ten percent, that is what tight is. It's in appreciation. That God had given you that blessing is a sign of gratitude. Is your subscription, your connection to power to get wealth? It is what you do to service the covenant. Every covenant has a token by which you must service it. If you don't service it, it will backfire. There was a certain man they brought to my meeting in Lagos, and he was mad mad six people were holding him he would do like this he, all of them would take off he would drop on the floor they would come again and hold him he would do, he. i don't know where he was getting energy from mad he was wearing boxer shorts so i got in there to pray for him i commanded it he, he, when i came out he ran so i ordered the anointing to pick him up whatever he was going to stop him reverse and start coming back no, I told that nobody should touch him. The anointing will pick him up. So he started coming by himself. He reversed like a car. I started coming by. Everybody was wondering, what kind of anointing is this one? He came back and knelt down and bowed. And I commanded the spirit of insanity out of him. And it came out. And I asked him, excuse me, what happened to you? He said he entered a covenant within a cult. And they told him he must be having sex with a mad woman once a week. Or else his wealth would disappear. So he, he had to rent a house somewhere and without the knowledge of his wife. Once in a week, he would tell his wife that he's going for a serious meeting. He will go and pick up a mad woman in the evening, in the night, 
and burn to the mad woman into the car and take the mad woman into the house and sleep with the mad woman in the morning before daybreak he will dump the mad woman somewhere again and come back home and say he went for board meeting and kept on lying so a certain week he couldn't catch a mad woman the mad woman was not available the mad woman ran away he looked for mad woman all over the whole place he couldn't find any he traveled far he couldn't get any mad woman then the court people warned him you have not done the token of the covenant you will go mad though the second week he couldn't get a mad woman they appeared in Israel and said ah, you have not manifested the third week he became mad by himself he removed all his clothes his office was 19th floor of a tall building he removed all his clothes and wore boxers came down and entered the street with boxer shorts he became mad sir. why because he did not fulfill the token of the covenant that he had with them in that cult and then poverty resumed madness took over before they dragged him to the place where I was preaching. Hear me clearly. It, of course, God delivered him and he confessed what he did. The truth is this. Every covenant, even in the positive, have a token. When you pay your tithe, you bring the token of the covenant of the power to get well that you have with God. You activate it. It starts working. That is the secret of this church. Because everybody is wondering, Apostle, where is he getting money? He's just building the church. Well, anytime we come, you see another level. And like, oh, he's not even disturbing us again. Before he used to say, Oh, yeah, Dennis, how much are you sowing? Moses, where is your offering? Uh -huh. Dockers, all of them say they bring 500 shillings. 100 say, No way, we are going to bring 2,000. They say, Now, one so this man that is commanding us to bring all the money we have. But now it doesn't even call nobody. And the place is, hey, hey, there's a secret to it. Sir. Pay your tithe. Everything people sow into your life, pay the tithe. If you don't pay tithe, life will be tight for you. Tight. If you want to cross into the level of covenant in wealth, you want to operate in the power realm, pay tithe. Do it with joy. Do it regularly. You will cross money will be looking for you you'll be monified you'll be monitious <laughs> the bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 22 the Deuteronomy chapter 14 22 says thou shalt truly tight all the increase of thy seed that the field bring forth year by year you must tight the increase the bible says in malachi chapter 3 verse number 10 the famous scripture says Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove now here we see the Lord of hosts. If I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. It is true. I am living example of this scripture. It works. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And ye shall, ye shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast a young before the time in the field. See the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed. For you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. All nations will call you blessed. That's verse number 12. The difference between Lot and Abraham is Abraham gave tithe of all to Meshizedek. Lot kept everything. And the Bible says some people came and arrested him as a slave and took everything he had. Abraham pursued them, recovered for him again, brought him back. He never paid tithe. The Bible says one day, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. He only came out with two daughters. His wife became a pillar of salt. His two daughters even raped him again. He lost everything he had. Why? Because he was not a tighter. He learned how to save, how to invest, how to multiply and grow wealth, but he never learned how to ensure the wealth supernaturally. When you pay tight, you ensure your wealth. You ensure it. You put an insurance scheme. When any gra, gra comes, God will do gra, gra on your behalf. It's called, stop that nonsense. That's my son, man. Don't touch him. Do you think, who do you think you are? And they will say, sorry, sorry. I didn't know it's a no-go zone. And he will leave you alone. Check it. If you see your finances going down, are you paying tight? Regularly? Yes, ma'am. Switch on her mic and let her speak, please. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's working now. So, just uh, a little question so that I get this clarification. Mm -hmm. Some people teach that we should pay our tithe first. That that's first before spending that money. That once we have started spending that money, 
and we now remove that. That is not an honor to God. I don't know if you are. What, what is your take on that, sir? I say yes and I say no. Why yes? When you make God number one, God will make you number one. Why no? Let's assume you forgot and remembered. I say, Father, I'm sorry. God will forgive you. That's all. That's why I say yes and I say no. Money can enter your hand and say, Chile, thank you, Jesus. You have done it again in my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I will bless you again and again. And then you quickly empeza the person that you are owing. Empeza your grandfather. Uh, empeza, hey, I have not paid my tithe. Father, have mercy on me, oh Jesus. And you pay your tithe. God will forgive you. God will forgive you. That's why I said no. Then I said yes, because when you make it constant, make God number one, he will make you number one in everything. The Bible says, the Bible, it says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added to you when you make god first he will make you first others will be copying you you'll be the leader you'll be the pioneer of everything so it's good to make god number one but if by mistake one you made a mistake once in a while and you quickly pay your tithe immediately god will forgive you but don't make it a normal thing and say, mm, i will pay the title jerry you eat all the money i will pay if i want another one come i will pay you are a fool you might not be able to pay after when it accumulates, you discover that you have not paid. Your, 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 the, the father will start saying hello to you. Say, nah, bro, it's half an hour. <laughs> yes, sir. Find... Thank you, sir. I yes. really want you to maybe emphasize that because sometimes I used to have that doubt that even if we eat the money and just know that we are owing tight, that we later pay. But there's a scripture that said that when a man takes his tight, then he should pay 20%. Yeah, yeah that's increases. like five more times yes though, which means it's better to just pay it pay the thing, oh, Jerry. see when you check the best the good that happens to you for paying tight you pay it that's true. we check our own there was a time when poverty was smiling at us <laughs> like this <laughs> smiling with 32 teeth <laughs> you know when witches are laughing that's the way they laugh <laughs> they laugh with anger <laughs> <coughs> I'm telling you, poverty was really smiling. Poverty was very happy. Until I began to ask God, Father, how do I prosper? I released the anointing for me to prosper. They prosper, but me, I'm not prospering. What is my problem? Then I gathered Bishop David Oyedeko step and began to listen to it. Gathered Reverend Jolaya step and listened to it. Galado look on your step and listen to it. In one of the things, Bishop Oyedeko said, pay your tight so that your life will not be tight. See? Then he broke it down for me and I understood it. Then I told her, let us start. Every shilling I get, I will give you the tight to keep. Then we send the tight. No matter how tight it is, we're going to do that. We started. We started. We started. After three to six months, our life became better. We had another meeting. I asked her, we're getting better. She said, yes. Ah. These are not more tight as used to be for us. In this country, not another country. We did it here. We said, I said, okay, let us increase to 20%. She agreed. So I will take any amount I get anywhere I walk, anything I do, I will take 20% and give her, she will keep for us. So when we, I gather it together and send it to my spiritual father, then he will pray for us. We kept on doing that. We kept on, after I discovered that when you need 200,000, you will get 500,000. I will use the 200,000 to do what I want to do. I'll pay my tithe. I will have extra to store. Ah! So I told her again, this thing is working. She said, it's true. So I said, let us increase to 30%. She said, no. She said, it's too much. I'm not ready to do it. She said, may God forgive me. I'm not. Eh? 30%. So I said, but I'm ready for 30%. She said, she's not ready. I said, okay, fine. We'll divide our money here. She said, fine. She said, she will pay her own percent. I should pay my own percent. So I chose to pay thirty percent. So I told her I will be richer than you. She said, yeah, fine, be richer than me. At least you'll be buying things for me. Are you not my husband? Hey, you buy car, buy things for me. Me, I'll pay my own. You pay your own. That was how we divided the money. She spends her money. I spend my own. I started paying thirty percent. Suddenly, God began to bless me in a serious way, sir. People will remember me. People will think of me and buy me things that I need, not things that when. You know, there was a time somebody bought me a suit. The suit was looking like flag. 
oh, the, the suit was longer than my hand like this. <laughs> and I needed it urgently. I needed that suit the next day. There was no time for Taylor to adjust it. When I showed up, I, 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 it, it is well. <laughs> Somebody gave me shirt. The shirt, the, the, the tie area started from this area. All the holes of my neck, all, 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 all the area that, you know, when you want to know a poor man, check this area. You will notice the poverty from this area because there will be some holes. <laughs> they were all showing. Imagine my tie started from this area because the neck was bigger than me. My, my neck now is size 17. Then I think the man gave me like size 20 or so. <laughs> I had to fold the arm and, and tuck it in and was managing myself. I told you when somebody gave me one shoe, the shoe was longer than my leg and I needed the shoe badly. So I had to put some rags and foam inside the shoe and I was working like an elder. I was working like an elder. Then that day they invited me to preach and that was the best shoe in my, in, in my house. So I cleaned it and put some rags inside and showed up in the church. And I was vibrating and preaching with thunder in my spirits. Because I had faith that God was going to change my life. I was telling them, God, we move you forward. I was not teaching, I was preaching. God will change your life. And they were saying, Amen. They see the anointing there. They were saying, Amen. I said, God will move you. Then I said, I will kick out every devil in your life. And I mistakenly raised my leg and the shoe took off. How I wish I didn't kick the devil that day. <laughs> the, <laughs> the shoe took off, flew to another corner. The rag came out and went to another area. One usher cut the shoe for me and brought the shoe. The usher did not know there was rag because the rag didn't go too far. It fell somewhere. He now brought the shoe and I put my leg inside. The shoe was like Keno. You know when you are inside a Keno? <laughs> and I put my leg. I couldn't move. I, I, I manifest. The man was manifesting before. It was looking like my leg. But when it was not paining me, the shoe was oversized. I was telling God, we still touch you. But I was standing in one place. I was trying to move the shoe. Because the shoe was too long. But when I began to be a blessing, see, when I took God's matter serious, God took my matter serious, people will get me exactly what I need. Exactly. Um, 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 my size. I don't know whether you have one shoe that is not your size before and you force your leg inside. By the time you return home, you regret you wore that shoe. No matter how fine it is, it will clear some area of your leg, sandpaper it and brush it very well for you. When you return, your, your, your leg will stick to your socks because of the power of blood. There will be a bond between your, your, your socks and your skin. When, when, when you want to remove it, you, you need water to, to, to rearrange your leg. Hot water. Then you disconnect your leg from the socks and you regret you, 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 you wore a brand new shoe that was not your size. But when you begin to make God priority, God will make you priority and also make you priority in people's hearts. Your value will shoot up. Tight is a sign that you made God priority. The sign that you made God your priority. It's a sign that you have given him his position. I do it. I began to do it and God started remembering me. People said, people change what they give to me. They will look at In fact, they will tell me, please manage it. We don't know whether you, and in fact, if you see anybody that you are going to give, and it's not that depression. We just wanted to sow a seed. God began to bless me with serious things. Began to bless me with serious, I mean serious things. Not just quick, quick, quick things that I will not need. So many years ago when I was still very poor, one guy gave me a shirt and I was asking him, sir, is this a rag or a shirt? Ah, ah! Hi! Did I offend you? Hi! Bros! The, 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 the white shirt has turned to a brownish, stupidish shirt like that. You, 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 you wonder what is going on here. Sir, are you praying against me or something? <laughs> but when you make God priority, your life becomes a priority. That is what tight does. Are you, have you understood that? Thank so don't you, eat the tight. Don't hide it. Don't pretend. And that was how God began to help me up until now. Of course, I buy her clothes. See her there, she, clothes. Give her the money. Sort yourself out. Buy some for her myself. Make sure buy her a car. Make sure her life is comfortable as she prophesied. <laughs> but God also blessed me as I prophesied also. <laughs> oh, praise God. And He's still blessing me. I beg you, don't joke with your tight. 
don't joke with the tight. Because as you want to prosper, even me, I want to prosper, sir. That's why I'm walking my way up, sir, by the grace of God. So don't say, ah, when you see Pastor, we have to say, man, that's your tithe. How much is your tithe? Let your head be correct. So you see that, remove your mind there and close that chapter and let it, you know, explode your destiny and make you who you should be, oh, Julie. Hallelujah. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. No. Number two, the second way to service the covenant of the power to get to it is offerings. Offerings, regularly. Offerings. Lay it in store. Do it regularly with joy. Give your offerings. The Bible says a certain woman cast in a widow's might. And Jesus said she had given all. Give your offerings. Give your offerings. As much as possible. Don't come to church with money that you have fought with the conductor. And come with 50 shillings. Or coins. What you can never give a beggar. Come with an offering that befits God. One day some people came here to work. Uh, to, to drop material. And then the guy said he's going to give offering. Uh, he said he's going to give offering. I was looking at him. Then he said he will give me 500. 500. I said look at me. Am I not more than 500? Hey. He's an insult. Give me. He said okay sorry sir. Abba. If me. I am bigger than 500 shillings. Why must you give God that? I made up my mind, I'll give God an offering of the highest note in every country I go to. The highest note. In Kenya, the highest note is still 1,000 shillings. So give it to God. Give God the highest note. When I went to America, I was given $100. I told God and God helped me. God answered my prayer like that. $100. If you go to um, London, the highest amount there is 50 pounds. 50 pounds. So make up your mind. Don't give God what does not cost you something as an offering. Give God an offering that befits God. That may, do you know that when you are going to uh, eat kukuchoma, you, you, you don't take coins. How many of you to take coins to, to, to where they eat kukuchoma? Sorry, those of you in America, kukuchoma in Kenya is chicken. <laughs> Am I correct? Uh, kukuchoma is chicken. So don't be, uh, we are in Nairobi, that's we are broadcasting from Nairobi, so don't be angry. You're here. Kukuchoma is chicken. Nyamachoma is. Sorry, what did Nyamachoma say? Beef, stick, steak, stook, whatever. Uh, Mbuzichoma is goat meat. <laughs> you can never go there with coins. It, it, it can never happen. They, 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 they warn you and warn your grandfather together with the warning. <laughs> so don't carry. Something that doesn't befit God to God. He says, even the Malachi says, do you carry a blind goat to give your governor? You don't carry things that doesn't befit God to God's presence. Whenever they see his offering, you now you look for coins. You're, 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 you're shaking your pocket like, wait, 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 to check. And the coins come. Then you now come and you hold it tight with anger. And you now come, you are looking for where to drop it. You now drop it uh, like this so that nobody will hear the sound. Go! <laughs> No, 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 stop that nonsense. From henceforth, give God what befits him. That is a way to activate, to keep propelling the covenant of the power to get wealth that you have. You know, there was a time when somebody came and stole money in church. And then I remember Pastor Dennis was accounting for the money. He said, no, I know Apostle always gives a certain amount and that amount is not here. Something must have happened. And that's how they discovered what happened. He dictated it. Why? Because he knows that his pastor doesn't give any quick, quick, quick money to God. The, the way you honor God and respect him determines how he honors you and respects you in the sight of people. God said, whoever honors me, I will honor. But whoever looks down on me, I will lightly esteem. So stop giving God coins. He's not in that class. He's not a beggar. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number three, seed of faith. Seed of faith is when you sow a seed of faith. Is when you sow a seed because you are expecting a harvest. When we wanted to get land in Kenya, I went to preach in Nigeria and Dr. Friday Beke's church, they announced that they just got a land and they needed to pay. And they said I should come and release the anointing. And I remember I went somewhere to preach and I, I was given 100,000. I was already planning on what to do with it. As soon as I had that announcement and I knew we needed land in Kenya, I stood up. I was number one person to drop my 100,000 in the basket. Bam! I remember Boniface was there. Boniface looked at me. Papa, you drop. Hey, shut up. Come on. 
Leave it there. <laughs> Say, Papa, you drop all the money. It doesn't concern you now. I made up my mind to. I need land in Nairobi. He said, okay, God will give us in Jesus' name. Baba, you drop everything. You have, hey, let us leave it there. Sir. He said, okay, sir. So we sat. We were now moneyless. Yes, now, because we dropped it. But you know, God blessed me seriously on that journey, sir. It was on that journey, God gave me my first one million as a gift. I met somebody in the aircraft, and I just prayed for the person, and the person said, give me your account now. I thought it was a joke. By the time I was entering the aircraft coming to Nairobi, one million was in my account. Excuse me, sir. Don't joke with all these kind of things. I am not saying to entice you. You see me live the life. So understand it well. You see me living that life. Living it seriously. So seed of faith is when you sow a seed in expectation for something. Abraham sowed Isaac as a seed. In expectation for children and god gave him serious number of children today is a nation israel it is founded by abraham sir today is a nation seed of faith when you need a car somebody just bought a car so he seed it to the person's life and say i believe god for my own car i did that several in this church before i had my car i did that people will bring car to church i'll bless it i'll carry some money and give them please use for fuel be praying for me also i'll get my own and finally god gave me cars are you understanding what i'm talking about uh, many times i went to people who bought their land and i so seed not only dr friday became uh, at least you know dr friday i will go to other places so seed and believe god for this land and i told god this land must come debt free and we're not owing anybody on this land hear me clearly in case i'm not around and somebody says we're we not owing nobody on this land we paid complete debt free debt free that's what i told god are you understanding me you saw somebody who is getting married and you're not yet married go and sow a seed into his life and say i tap the anointing to be married i harvest my own marriage that is wisdom the same way a farmer that wants plenty corn plants one corn that's what you do a seed of faith seed of faith you see somebody building you sow a seed and trust God that by the grace of God, you will also build your own church or your own house. You've seen that building rising. Use your wisdom to say, sir, I want to sow this seed. Uh, have you fixed the toilet? This is part of the toilet. Have you fixed the door? This is part of the key. And so on and so forth. Use your wisdom to make sure that you are connected and then you begin to rise. I keep doing it. I have not stopped doing it. Uh, Abraham was the first person to do that. He wanted to kill his uncle. Said, "Stop! It's all right." And then he took the animal and he sowed. And that is how God has given him children today all over the world. People are claiming to even be his children that he doesn't even know. <laughs> Hallelujah! Number four, prophet's offering. Prophet's offering is the offering you give a prophet that has spoken into your life, that has prophesied into your life, believing God that the word will not fall to the ground without coming to pass. That is called prophet's offering. Prophet's offering. Prophets of it. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10, verse, verse 41. Matthew 10, 41 says, He that received a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that received a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive the righteous man's reward. When you give a cup of water to a prophet, you get the prophet's reward. When the prophet speaks over your life, you give the person an offering. You sow a seed. And the thing multiplies. Don't give him as a beggar. Of course, if you do that to me, I'll say, come on, you need it more than me. Go and be eating it. You do it with honor. It's called honorarium. You put it in an envelope, you do it well. You don't squeeze it like bribe. And you squeeze, uh, squeeze it. And you're not giving. Right? If you try that with me, I'll fire you straight. <laughs> somebody was doing that. I say, look at me very well. Do I look like somebody like that kind of body? If I run away from me, I behave well. Ah, can't, don't you know how to give people a seed with honor? I, i'm not begging for it so what's wrong with you so always do things well i remember one of my uh, uh, senior pastors came from nigeria somebody i respect and revere a lot and somebody wanted to give him money he now squeezed the money squeezed the money to to give him to i was forcing to his hand no no don't do that it's not honor it's an insult when you are giving bribe to 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 an askari you can squeeze it but when you are <laughs> when you are giving prophet offering put in an envelope make it neat so that it can attract quality blessing not you are giving the person and the person feels humiliated you are giving him money he feels insulted he feels what nonsense is this one 
Don't do that. Do it with honor. Have you understood me? Including those watching online. The Lord God Almighty bless you. Ma. Matthew 10 41. Matthew 10 41. Then building altars and temples is a way to service the covenant that you have with God. Building altars like this. This is an altar. And building temples like we are building now. When you join to build the house of God, when you join to build the altar of God, it brings wealth. It brings wealth. I will show you a man that became very wealthy because he built an altar. Isaiah 44 verse 28. He built a temple. Isaiah 44 verse 28. The Bible says, That saith of Cyrus, He is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure. Even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built unto the temple. Thy foundation shall be laid. Now, Cyrus made up his mind he's going to build the temple of God in Jerusalem. Let me now show you what happened to him. Isaiah 45 from verse 1. Isaiah 41, 45 verse 1. The Bible says, Thus said the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holded, to subdue nations before him, and lose the loins of kings, to open before him the two lift gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut the sun and the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. One. And I will give you hidden riches of secret places. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which have called thee by name, I am the God of Israel. God give him access to hidden riches in secret places. Why? Because he was building the temple. Whenever you build temples, you provoke God to give you provision. He gives you hidden riches in secret places. Whenever you see a temple, church being built, join them. Don't let them beg you. Join them. It's a great opportunity. We are building a temple here. Join quickly. Don't let them there. You are not wondering hey, when they need, they will call me. They won't call you, sir. God will bring other people. So don't let them start calling and say, hello, hello. Eh? We want to fix the tap, the tap. And just say, eh, eh, how much is it? Ten thousand. Okay, I have two thousand. <laughs> Stop that nonsense. Don't wait for them to call you. Join. This man decided to build the temple. God said I will give him hidden riches in secret places. He became the wealthiest man in that generation. Solomon decided to build the temple. He became the richest man on earth in his generation. Abraham was always building altars wherever he went. He became the richest man of his generation. Learn from these builders. People that build altars and people that build temples for God. You might not be able to build all the altars. Hey, join those who are building it. Let's just be part of it. You are any day, like we are here now praying and preaching the word of God. Some blessings will be hitting you, hitting you. <clears throat> That's the way it works. Because as long as people are praying on that altar, God will be remembering you because you are one of those who made it happen. As long as people are praying in that temple, my God, some blessings will be hitting you wherever you are. That is what happens. Why? Because you join to make that temple a reality. Are you understanding what I'm showing you? Number six, the sixth way to activate your wise work with God, provoking the power to get to a true covenant is lending to the Lord. What do I mean by lending to the Lord? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. Proverbs 19, 17 says, He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. When you give to poor people, you are lending to the Almighty God, and God will repay you. Whenever you do that, do it with joy. Do it, do it happily, because God will repay you again, sir. In Psalm 41, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. He shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bend of languishing. Then he will make all his bed in his sickness. That means he will recover from sicknesses. He will not be delivered to the hands of his enemy. God will establish him upon the earth. God will preserve him and keep him alive. He will not be he will, God will deliver in time of trouble. Why? Because he is given to the poor. Now, there I will answer one question before I close. Because I have only one more point. I will answer one question. Many times, people behave like Judas Iscariot. And they say, 
Why don't you give the poor than give the church? That is Judah's spirit. I repeat with emphasis, I repeat with audacity. I, with no apology, sir. When people think of the poor more than the church or the house of God, it is Judah's spirit. I repeat it again. Seriously. So, so that it can be heard clearly that I made that statement. When people think of the poor more than the church, it is Judas Iscariot spirit. What do I mean by that? The Bible says to us, somebody broke an alabaster box and poured the oil on Jesus and it was smelling. It had good perfume. Judas got angry and said, why don't we sell this perfume and give the money to the poor? The Bible said, it is not because he cared for the poor, because he was a thief and he had the bag and had been stealing from it. He spoke with indignation and he said, why shouldn't we do that? Jesus answered and said, the poor you have with you always, but me, you don't have always. So, the, you give preference to the church than to the poor, sir. I repeat, sir. I repeat, because the poor will forever remain. In fact, if you claim to be poor now, poverty will resume in your life straight. And till Jesus comes, till this world close, poor people will remain on earth. Understand it clearly. Some may not even be poor, but they, they have poverty mentality. So they will, they will be on earth. That is why you need to understand that you give God, the church, more honor. He said, me, you don't have always, but the poor, they're always there. So give to me first, and then before the poor. So let's clear it. It is being sentimental. It is being dubious. It is playing games. Having a rebellious spirit. That is what makes me say, let us go and give it to the poor. In fact, somebody will call and say, can I pay my tithe to the poor? Is that the poor your God? Bring your the tithe into the storehouse, into the house of God, and you are carrying to the poor. Is that your storehouse? Are you understanding what I'm going to say? I need to clear it because I've had that question a lot. It is you being a hypocrite. I repeat with emphasis. I speak with the audacity. It is being a hypocrite. But I say, let me go and give to the poor than give to the church. You are a hypocrite. You are a Judas. That's the way Judas behaves. He does not love the poor. He's thinking of, let us scatter church. Why must we be in church? Ah, why must we give to the Lord? Who is the Lord, by the way? And so on and so forth. It's a sign that you are rebellious against God. So please take it serious. You give to God's house first before the poor. That's why I gave, I gave you the in order of preference, in order of priority. Number seven, you give to soul winning ventures. Soul winning activities, crusades. You see soul winning going on, make sure you are part of it. These are things you do to activate wealth. The Bible says in Proverbs 11 verse 30, Proverbs 11 that it says the fruit of the of righteous is the tree of life. And he that winneth soul is wise. Whoever wins soul is wise. The Bible says again in Daniel chapter 12 verse 3 says, And they that shall be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. It will be like the stars forever. In Matthew chapter 19, 27 to 29, Peter said, we have followed you. What are we going to get? Matthew 19, 27 to 29. Peter said, what will we will get? Jesus said, in this world you shall have 100 fold. And in the world to come, eternal life. So when you do this, when you are the one giving, you will enjoy hundredfold on earth. And then in the world to come, in heaven, eternal life. I have given you seven keys to activate the covenant of the power to get wealth. I practice it. So that's what I'm talking about. That's it. I practice it. That is why by the grace of God, I will never come to anybody's house to beg for food. In the name of Jesus Christ, as the Lord live it. If you can follow these steps, you will activate covenant. Remember I told you, there are some levels of wealth you will never reach until you enter a covenant. Either you enter with the devil or with God. And the covenant with God, look at the simple things you need to do. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Look at the yoke. Simple. Very simple. Do you know that some people are not even saved? They do this. They pay tight. Do you know that some Muslims even pay tight? When they understood the secret, they do it. And they began to do it and they are prospering. And then you are a Christian, you are doing gragra. I have discovered that when you refuse to obey simple things that God tells you to do, one day you will obey a witch. 
I took my clue from the life of Saul. When Samuel told him what to do, he refused to do it. Samuel, the prophet, told him, do this, he refused to do it. Then finally Samuel died. And he started looking for Samuel. He couldn't find Samuel. He went to a witch. A witch told him to eat. He started eating under pressure. And that was his last supper on earth. He died the next day. So be careful, sir. When you refuse to obey God, get ready, you soon obey a witch. A wizard will soon control you. He will soon tell you what to do, and you run and be doing it under pressure. Why? Because not in, you don't have an option anymore. You have sold yourself to the hand. Therefore, let us take this matter very seriously. I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ, you will swim in wealth Amen. all the days of your life. Amen. You will never be poor as you understand what I've taught you this morning Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody say that amen loud and clear. Amen. I want to know whether you learned something this morning. I want to know what you learned this morning. So can I have another microphone? What have you learned this morning? What did you learn? What is learning in Kiswahili? Soma. Kusoma. Emedua. What you have learned? I, I want to understand it. Thank you, sir. What have you juad? It was my brain. Why are you people fighting the elder? The elder said it is jua. You now said it is fulza. <laughs> eh? Fulza. Funza. Umejifunza. What have you funzad? What, what about Jua? What is the meaning of Jua? Oh, what do you know? Uh, Fulza. Fulza is what have you learned? Okay. Kiswahili. Chai. <laughs> I will surprise you guys one day. I will just say Fulza. Just... <laughs> All right. If you have learned something, can I see your hand up? What have you learned this morning? Number one. Anybody else? Number two. Anybody else? What have you learned this morning? I have downloaded here. Number three, that's winning. Number f anybody else? I just want five people. So it means the other people, something has happened. We didn't learn nothing. Okay, number four, I need one more person. So that we know where we are going to. Before we start. Who is number five? Okay, okay fantastic. All right. Number one, start. When you pay your tithe regularly, you ensure your wealth supernaturally. Simple. God bless you, man. Next person, Professor, here. Yes. You know, I'll, uh, in summary, say that I've learned seven keys that will activate my will. Yes. And I just want to appreciate God that I used to be such. Wow. Some of the things that I've learned, even at my age, I, I have learned them in such an order. And I'm saying, in spite of it, where I am, yes. I will try to do it. Amen. Yeah. Well, God bless you. Man. That's Professor. God bless you. Man. Number three. Yes. I've learned that hard work alone is not enough. We need wisdom. I'm telling you, you need to work wise. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's very easy to be rich and wealthy. You just need to obey God and do everything he tells you to do. Just that. Well, thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Yes, you're number five. Thank you, sir. I want to say that what I learned today from this teaching is the first scripture you started with is that the Bible said, God is saying, gather my saints to me. Those who made uh, covenant. covenant with me by, by sacrifice. sacrifice. And you have said that if we want to enter enduring wealth, yes. we must be in covenant relationship with God. What I learned from these seven things that you told us is that I must be somebody giving to the Lord. Simple. When I'm tightening, I should not tight like, okay, we are tightening because... Uh, we, I should tie it as unto the Lord. Give it to the Lord. When I'm giving my offering, it should be a giving to the Lord. Because when I'm giving to the Lord, I'm making a covenant with him. Not with any other thing I'm thinking about. 
when I'm giving my seed of faith, it's given to the Lord because it's a covenant, then he will locate me. When I'm giving prophet offering, I should not, you know, look at prophets and say, this ah, one is a small prophet. prophet. This I'm one is a small you. prophet. Let <laughs> me just, you know. What if I am ever moved, I should ask God, what will you want me to give you? Not give this prophet. You know, oh, well, what I learned is that whatever I do is to be unto the Lord. Actually, when we give the poor, and we are giving the poor in such a way that, oh, you are suffering. Child. Oh, I hate that you are suffering. Oh, yeah, take. Yeah. It no will reward. Mean, yes. No because reward. I saw that the Bible said we are lending unto the Lord. Unto the if Lord. I'm lending unto the Lord, then I have to give it to the Lord. But if I give it to the poor, the poor will eat it. And, wow. So whatever I give, it should be unto the Lord. So that my, 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 my harvest be will be pounded. sure. Yes. Thank you, sir. That's what I learned. God Giving to the Lord. Now, above all, as I wind up, okay, I'll check what everybody has said here. Please, if you have learned something, just keep saying it. I'm coming to you now. All those online. Above all, give yourself to God. If you have not given your life to God and you are giving to God, you are wasting time. God always accepts you first before I accept your offering. Check Abel. He started it from the first offering. Abel was accepted. Then his offering was accepted. Cain was not accepted, so his offering was not accepted. Don't think the bigness of the money. Some people have brought offering and I rejected it. In this place, I've rejected it. They brought offering and I said, no way. I, don't. I asked who told you to bring it? We don't need it here. He said, but hey, stop that. I, Apostle Derek said, we don't need it here. Thank you. Take it anywhere else. I've rejected offerings here. When I notice it's done with ulterior motive, with wicked hearts. Yes, yes, yes. I have done it severally, not once. Severally. She knows about it. There are times somebody bring money to me. In fact, I'll just keep it somewhere. You talk too much, I'll give it back to you. Yes, yes, yes. Because it could be done with disdain. Not with the right heart. I have rejected checks. Brought here. I said, no, we don't want. We don't. God bless you. You need it more than us. Spend it. Yes. Because I notice it's not done with the right heart. If I can handle that, how much more God? Give yourself to God. You can't bribe God. God is not a fool. God is not an Askari. A soldier. Soldier Kujapa. Then you give him. 100 shillings. Then you ask him, is your boss at home? You know, sir, he, he, he will come by five. <laughs> then you give him another 100 shillings. When, what about his wife? He, he went to market. Then you give him another 100 shillings. His children. Can we kidnap, them? kidnap their grandfather self? God is not a fool. Though. The Bible says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. So don't mock God and say, I can bribe him. When you are doing this, you make sure you have given yourself over to God first. Then you can now give God any other thing and then the blessings will come. I, I hope it is very clear, sir. Very clear. You can't bribe God. If I bribe you now, I, cannot, I may decide not to be your friend, but I bribe you and I get what I want and I walk away. But you can't try that with God. God doesn't collect bribe from people. When you give to God without you giving your heart to God, it is bribery. God won't take it. He's not a beggar. You only wasted your time. In case the pastor is not sensitive enough to know, <laughs> God will not reward you. That's why you see somebody give and no blessings come. I am very sensitive. You bring money to me. As I'm holding, I'm asking God, Father, how far? If God says no, we are telling you we don't need it here, sir. We don't. Thank you very much for your offering. We are very grateful. You need it more than us. Uh, go on. <laughs> yes, sir. I've done that several times. Somebody who brought a car, I returned the car. Somebody, I repeat, somebody brought a car to this church as gift, seed. I returned it back to the person because God said no. Ben, car, C-A-R, car, motto. So understand it clearly. Because by the time you give me a car and you are now commanding me from the coffins, no, no way. <laughs> it's not done here. Some pastors may not be that sensitive to know the offering they should collect or not. There are people who have sent me m -Pesa and I call them and I say, what is the reason for the m -Pesa? Why have you sent the m -Pesa? I am forwarding it back to you now. Hey, man of God, I say, I am sending it back to you. We don't need it here. Why? Because your offering is not accepted, sir. It's not. When you give with a wicked heart, 
when you you are running after another person's wife and you are giving us money Aye. Ah, ah, you're a wicked man. Oh, Jerry, just to turn now. Uh -huh. And you're not giving us offering. You think we're in need? Uh -uh. God is not in need of a wicked heart offering. Leave another man's wife alone. Stick with yours. Are you understanding what I'm showing you? I have done that several to several people in this nation. And I will do it over and over again. As long as I sense it's not right, I'll tell you no way. Why? Because there's no need for us to collect it and give you false hope. And you become the chairman of hellfire. And you remember you gave Apostle Eric some seed. The child. And I gave Apostle seed. And fire is roasting me hellfire. Ah! Fire. Apostle. Ap don't call my name in hellfire. <laughs> I don't want to be present in hellfire. So please. Give your heart to God. And then you give anything to God. And you prosper exclusively. Sir, by the grace of God. Amen. Somebody say thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. All right. Let us see those who are online. Sylvia Chilwana joined us from Ethiopia. God bless Sister Sylvia in Jesus' name. Ofong Akang joined us from Scotland. God bless you, Ma. Tom Malivi joined us from Uganda. God bless you. Sister Ofong said, Hosanna in the highest, my king be lifted up. I declare I'm a millionaire. I'm a happy millionaire. Then somebody called Sandra Daramola joined us from... Uh, Sandra Daramola is a Nigerian name. That's from Nigeria. God bless you. Thank you. For joining us, Tom Maleve said, I'm a happy millionaire. Sylvia Chiwana said, I'm a millionaire and I'm happy, happy, happy. Hallelujah. Rita Ugumba said, I'm a millionaire. Tom Maleve said, Activity Financial Growth. Kingsley Ehatov from Scotland said, It's really true. Save with a focus. Lenuta Dragisi joined us also from United Kingdom. God bless you, ma. Thank you for joining us. All right. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Tom said, If you want active financial growth, work hard you are right sir sylvia said tolu tolu is fast in ethiopia <laughs> <laughs> hey. okay ha. that is serious he's very fast in ethiopia we'll come to ethiopia and see the tolu tolu <laughs> all right nana boateng from ghana said watching live god bless you apostle eric amen oh. all right mm. what changes said i'm a rich man Nana said, I'm a rich man. Lenuta Draghi said, I'm a rich man. Okay. But you're a woman. <laughs> Robin Dezun watched us from South Africa. Laduni Awofunwa watched us from Lagos, Nigeria. Or oh, are you in U.S., man? God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Isi Jola Taiwo joined us from Abuja, Nigeria. Thank you for joining us. Kingsley Hatter, that's United Kingdom. All right. Laduni Awofunwa said, Apostle. Good morning, sir. God bless you, Mao. A DBC function at this asset, a covenant with God and living by the standards and principle guarantee all round prosperity. Madam, you're on the point. You are right, man. Kingsley said, I learned that when you are diligent, steadily, working hard, you would amount to wealth. You are correct. You will amount to wealth. Hallelujah. Dorothy Atikwirize from um, Uganda said, If you don't pay tight, your life will be tight. Ma, you are very correct. She said again, I received grace to become monitious. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, you'll be monified in Jesus' name. Robin Duzun said, I learned that there is a level of wealth I can't obtain except by covenant. You are correct. Building the house of God is among the ways of activating covenant of wealth. You are very good, much on the point. Ladoni Awufunwa said, I learned that anything we do or give is unto the Lord, not to the person we are dealing with. Our covenant is unto God, the owner of all. Ma, you are very correct. Sandra, that I'm said, awesome. Kelvin Nyanga, chosen from Naivasha, said, Amen. Lenuta Dragisi said, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Those are the people that were online this morning. We give God praise. All right, I want us to pray this morning. Father, I enter the covenant of prosperity with you now. Give me the power to get wealth. Go ahead, pray. I enter the covenant of prosperity with you right now. Give me the power to get to it. Go ahead, pray. I enter right now the covenant of prosperity. Give me the power to get wealth. Jesus. I enter the covenant of prosperity with you, O oh God. Give me the power to get wealth. I ask for the power to get wealth. Let that power come upon me. 
Give me the power to get well to God. I enter that covenant with you this morning. I'll be faithful in my own way. I'll be faithful in my tithe, in my offering, prophet offering, seed of faith. I will build the house of God. I will build an altar for Jehovah. I will win souls. I will take care of the poor. As I do that, O oh God, I receive explosive prosperity in the name of Jesus Christ. And I will use it to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Immortal God, I have taught them both in words, in deed, and by example. Your children have had your word. I'm asking now that you cause each person who have had this word to explode into prosperity Amen. by this covenant Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Each person that will follow the simple steps of a wise walk. Lord, I'm asking, O oh God, that you make them a wonder to behold Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I command the spirit of poverty to get out. Get out of the life of everyone that came to church and those connected to us from different parts of the world. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I decree from henceforth that you have given your heart and your life to God. God takes over everything that concerns you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So Amen. shall it be. Thank you, Thank you Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. It's time to give to God our offerings and our tithes. It is time. So get out your offerings. Get out your get out your seeds if you have yours physically you can come and drop them in the bowl here just walk by yourself drop them and go back to your seat uh -huh. uh, they said we should not pass things up and down because of coronavirus so it's on the altar there so just drop it and go back to your seat and then if you have yours on mpesa uh, on mpesa use the mpesa p bill eight two one four three zero eight two one four three zero 821430 and give your offering and it will reach us immediately if you're outside kenya and you want to give your offering you can use the send wave app send wave app and you send it to the phone number there and it will reach us immediately the lord god almighty will bless you now do it deliberately don't give your offering by mistake deliberately give your offering now go ahead deliberately don't mistakenly give offering uh -uh. Do it well. It is your destiny. Yes. 821430. Tell the offering. If it's prophet offering us, tell it, I am sending you to go for me now. I am sending you to go for me right now. It is time for you to enter, to go for me. Change my story in the name of Jesus Christ. I enter and activate the covenant of wealth. I will never be poor. If it is your tithe, please take an envelope, a clean envelope, and give me your tithes. If it is prophet offering, take an envelope and write prophet offering. It will go to the prophet. <laughs> Hallelujah. If it is building offering, write building. We use it to buy cement. We will use it to build by the grace of God. It will be used for what it's meant for. It, in this place, we don't steal the church money and now use it for something. Uh, 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 it doesn't happen here. Hallelujah, it does not. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. So go ahead, do it. Right now, right now, right now. From different parts of the world, go ahead, give your offerings. If you descend with up, we'll get it here too. The Almighty God will honor you. You will never beg for bread. You will not look for what is not lost. God will give you access, access to wealth. Oh, glory to Jesus. All right, let us pray. Our Father, we thank you. For everyone giving their offerings right now. We ask, O oh God, that their offerings be accepted. Our offerings be accepted in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask, O oh God, right now, that you remove our names from the register of poverty this morning. And give us power to get wealth. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are stepping forward, go ahead. Step forward and do it now. If you need the machine raise your card up you want to use your card raise your card up they will bring the machine to you and you slot it in and sort out the offering that you'll be given the lord god almighty will bless you in the name of jesus christ all right father bless your children mightily as we prepare O oh lord god for the second service put your breath upon us and do us good in jesus name we pray amen all right let's close for this morning
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you are stepping forward, drop your offering. Don't be afraid. Step forward. Aye.